And joining us now to discuss this further is Beth Garza. She's a senior energy fellow with the R Street Institute. Beth, thanks so much for joining us on the program tonight. Oh, it's good to see you, Augustine. Uh, Ms. Garza, as we reported, Texas is dealing with unusually high uh, temperatures and humidity for this time of year. Some predict the state will set a record for power demand at some point this week. Based on what you know, should the grid be able to handle that demand? I, I agree. I think we may set a new uh, system peak this week. Um, but I think the systems are in place to deal with that demand. Um, and uh, we've... It, it's going to be hot. It's going to be miserable. But sometimes that's just Texas. That's just summer in Texas. Um, but I don't think we should be concerned about there being an overall lack of supply. Um, the good news about the you know summer in Texas is the sunshine. That's what creates all that heat. And and uh, we've got tremendous new amounts of solar energy that are contributing to that uh, to that resource mix. And and they're doing that as we speak. ERCOT launched its contingency reserve service this month. Uh, it's the first time ERCOT has added a tool of this kind in 20 years. How will this benefit customers in Texas? Well, what it does is it basically pays some generators, some uh, in this case, primarily batteries are the are the type of generators that are most taking advantage of this new service. And it basically pays them to be ready to produce energy when needed. And in fact, um, although that service has been in place for just a short time, I believe it's only it's been used twice already. That is, the reserve capacity has been turned into energy. Um, one of those situations was last Friday when uh, one of the nuclear power plants in the region tripped offline unexpectedly. That's why we carry these reserves. That's why we have them is when these unexpected outages occur, we have something stand, standing by, ready reserves to then turn, immediately turn into energy. And so customers don't even notice, a, you know, anything has happened. And that, in fact, did happen on Friday, as recently as Friday. Ms. Garza, during the recent legislative session that just ended, the regular session, lawmakers voted to spend billions to support the construction of gas-fueled uh, power plants, even though many of them did fail during the 2021 deadly uh, freeze, yet they voted to make it more costly to connect renewable to the grid. So how do you grade the legislature this year in trying to fix the grid? Well, you're going to get me started on a rant here, Augustine, that we won't have time to complete. So let me just say that it, it, other than a few improvements to efficiency and effectiveness of the organization itself that were included in the PUC sunset bill, most of the rest of the output from this session was, I would describe, not as bad as it could have been. Um, and that, that's about as far as I would go. And lastly, I want to ask you one more thing. Should Texas join the national power grid and would that save Texans money? I, you know, there is no real national power grid. There are three separate grids across the, the U.S. Um, I am personally an advocate for more connections between Texas and the broader um, and the other two grids. And I think that can be done with uh, current technology called high voltage direct current. I think that can be done in a way that uh, meets all our regulatory concerns um, and would provide more backup and more uh, capability for us to withstand these increasingly uh, extreme weather events, particularly winter weather events. Okay, that is all the time we have for now. Beth Garza with the R Street Institute. Again, thank you for your time.